It's all in the details. Illustrations by Pete. So this piece was very usual for me. In the beginning, everything has an ugly phase. Usually it's a very long ugly phase to the end. This one was no exception till the very end. I really didn't like it. I was trying to do something else. It ended up being something else with the details that I put in, but it was what made me like it. Before that, I thought, oh my goodness, this is ugly. It's terrible. I never want to do this again. And I do it every time. Something happens when you add the ink. It brings out the character of the piece. And it, you, you see the lines finally. You see where the detail is and what it's supposed to look like. Before that, nothing. It looks terrible. All right, let's take a look at it. So I guess something that I do, and maybe a lot, a lot of other people do it, but I always start with the paint first. You see a lot of people start with the ink first and then they color it in because you're used to doing that. That's a normal thing. From a kid, you're given books with black lines and then you just color in where you want to color in. I think people get used to that and they're not used to looking at the color first and then putting in the lines. And for me, I was that way all the time. Always put the pen first, draw the picture, put in all the details I want and everything, and then put in a little bit of color and it comes out great. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm doing now with the abstract stuff, sometimes I'm not sure of the shapes I'm going to put in there. I'm not sure of the detail I'm going to put in there. So I put the color in first, then I get to make the decisions of where do I want the lines to fall, how much detail do I want to give each section based on the paint. Sometimes it's the paint that decides that. Sometimes it's because there's uh, waves of granulation that happen in the paint or maybe I went back in with a darker color and just put a little splotch of something somewhere. And so I decide, okay, yes, that's where I'm going to put some ink and put some detail. So. I decide that stuff after I have the color on the page and I think because of that the whole beginning part of the painting looks like crap it looks like trash because I haven't made any decisions yet I haven't it's the details that decide whether they looks like a good piece or not now I know you can make loose line and wash and it still looks nice but for what I'm doing for line and wash abstract art I'm just saying once I put the lines in, that's when you see where all the detail is and it everything just kind of comes together. Until that point, I basically should throw it out. It's garbage. There's nothing there worth looking at until those lines hit the page. Now I have done some abstract art before without the lines. I just don't like it as much. I don't think it, it's nice enough. And when you do that, you have to make the colors very bold and very bright and kind of put some detail in with other shades of paint inside the same paint. So it's just, you have to do something to it. I'm telling you, when it comes to art, for me, it's all about the details. I would rather look at a black and white piece with a lot of details than I would a color piece that has no details just because that's what I'm into. I want to. I want my brain to look at it and struggle to make out the shape. What is that? Is that supposed to be something? Is it, is it rec I recognize it somewhere. It looks like maybe it should be something, but it's not anything. That's what I want my brain to do when I look at abstract art. So that's what kind of pieces I create. Now on this one, I didn't go crazy. I just toned the page a little bit. I put one color in the background just to tone it up a little bit. And then I started just kind of painting and putting other colors in and seeing where I want to. And everything dried very, uh, almost white again. But it was just a little bit of enough color there where it didn't look pure white. And when I put the other color on top of it, it gave it kind of a slightly cool color. Uh, for the background, I did use the neutral tint from Daniel Smith. So... It wasn't anything crazy. It's a little bit of a bluish, purpley color. Very, very light. It dries very, very light. And then I went back in with some bolder colors and then added more color and more color until I figured out where I was going to put some detail and what I wanted to do. But I'm telling you, until I put that ink in, it was nothing to me. It didn't look good to me. I thought it was terrible art. So if you stay till the end, you'll see it actually gets better than what it is. And originally, 
It was supposed to be something completely different. If I tell you, you'll see that I failed. But originally, it was supposed to be like this uh, weird landscape. Like this ominous, um, I don't know, post-apocalyptic landscape with some mountains and then like a black sun that just had light around it. But but that's not what I did. Once I, I started doing stuff, I said, this is completely different. This has nothing to do with the landscape. This has nothing to do with a mountain. It's just a design that I put in here. And that's what ended up happening. I just... I, I went with it almost from the beginning. I realized this is not going to work out the way that I wanted to. I'm going to have to just go with it and see what happens. And that's what I did. And in the end, after I put in all the detail, I, j I liked it. It was something that grew on me as I did that. As I did more and more, I liked it more and more. And that's just how it was. So speaking of liking things, I don't know what happened, but for some reason... I did that little draw with me, that real-time thing. People loved it. All of you loved it. It was probably one of my most popular videos in a very long time. It, it got a tremendous amount of watch time. It, it just, it's still getting views now. I think it was pretty close to 300 views in the first week. That's not what I my videos do normally. That's not what they've been doing. I've had some terrible videos that have done virtually nothing and all of a sudden this one comes along and all of you voiced that opinion you all went to the video and said hey I like this this is a good idea keep doing some more of these so I will I promise I will um, not this time but I will I'm gonna continue to do those maybe the next video will be just like that and it was fun for me because I, I thought at first it was gonna come out like trash and I, because I knew I would stop talking, I would forget what I was saying, or forget what I was drawing, or, or something, or I'd, I'd just be so concentrating on drawing something, I'd just stop talking altogether. But really, it was it was a lot better. When I go back and I look, it was a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. So I'm glad you all enjoyed that. I enjoyed it as well. I'm going to continue to do some more of those. And let me tell you, I'm learning some lessons now. It's I've been doing this for a little over two years, and I just, I've just i learned lessons now, and I'm still learning. Every day is a new thing because they keep changing the damn thing, so you got to keep up with it. And Like I thought, okay, two videos a week, that would be the answer. So I had a good video that was doing well, put out a second video on a Thursday, and they shut off all the distribution of the other video. They just shut it down. And the, I know they say they don't. Oh no, we treat each in, each video as its own individual thing. No, you don't. Because I released it and they stopped the views. For at least a week, I didn't get another view on that video. Instead, it went to the second video, which didn't get a lot of views either. So it trashed my numbers. It was just a bad idea altogether. So this time, I saw that that video was doing well. I left it alone. I'm not doing anything else uh, into it or I'm not doing anything else after it. I'll give it the full week to do whatever it's going to do. And that paid off. That worked out well. So I don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what I'm doing. And I don't think anyone knows what I'm doing. So that's fine. Don't worry about that. We'll figure that out as we go. So when I do those videos, I am going to try and keep it kind of simple. I'm going to do something a little bit more simple. Like this one, probably, I think this is like two hours of video edited down. But the last, it only took me like 37 minutes, I think it was, to do that other video. And that was easy. That was, it was a simple one and much easier to do than this one. But, you know, two hours of video editing it down, it sounds like a lot. But some of it is just letting like a layer dry for, you know, like 30 seconds. Just letting that spot dry so I can go back into it or something like that. So, but I didn't do that the last, the when I did that draw with me video where I just did that real time I didn't have time for that so I just would do a section and then I would do another section and then go back and put the ink on the first section once it was dry while I kept working on the next section it just it was interesting it was very interesting I think I enjoyed it and I'll, I'll definitely do some more of that so I'm going to tell you about something that really annoyed me today and I don't understand why they would do this but I was at a stoplight 
and I was waiting to turn onto my road. I was making a left on my road. Now, here's the thing about this light. It has an, uh, an arrow. It has a light for an arrow to make that left turn. But it only does it sometimes. Like, if you don't hit that light before it turns red, then you're probably going to be stuck for another light. Because it, it won't change. The arrow won't come up when the light goes green again. It just... It flashes yellow, but it doesn't, and it's pretty busy at certain times of the day, so you're not going to get through. Why put the arrow there if you're not going to use it? And it's a busy area, so the other time, sometimes if there's traffic lined up all the way down the other side and they know that there won't be a break, you'll get the arrow and you can go, which is fine. But and, and sometimes if there's three or four cars behind you all trying to make a left, when the light goes green, it'll go, the arrow. But most of the time it doesn't. And sometimes you can see the line of traffic coming down the road. And it's just going green and you know you're not going to make it. And you have to sit there for another couple of minutes while everyone goes again. And it's just a pain. It irritates me. I don't know why they do that. Why do they put the lights with the arrows if they're not going to use the lights with the arrows? Every time it changes... If there's someone on that pressure plate, it should just turn. That's it. The arrow should go on. There's someone there. Not, well, they got there a little bit after the light turned red, and then they pulled up to the pressure plate. So what? Just still turn green so we can go. It's very obnoxious. Listen, if any of you are city planners out there and you're figuring this stuff out, all the traffic patterns, do us a favor. If the light has the option to do the turn signal thing, just set on the turn signal thing. If there's a car there, set it off. Just have it set to do that. Well, that's all I want to say about that, but it just bugs me. Now listen, at the end of this, you're going to see something, and someone that looked at it said, oh, that looks like a Lord of the Rings thing, but, you know, this, it's not. It was not designed to be that way. It was not designed to be the Eye of Sauron or nothing like that. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't even resemble that. I understand what they're getting at, but it does not resemble that at all to me. But to some people, it did, so they, or to at least one person, it did, so they said that, but it didn't to me. The thing is, even if it was, it's still a better remake of the Eye of Sauron than whatever Amazon just did. That's a zinger, but I'm, I'm not trying to just jump on a bandwagon here. I didn't think it was as bad as everyone said the remake was. It was just not remake. It's, you know, it's a part of the story. It's just another thing. I understand why people would be angry that it didn't follow the storyline. I get that part of it. And yes, the actress who played Galadriel, she was kind of very one note, very same expression the whole time, the entire show, the entire season. There was not a different expression on her face. I know it was supposed to be serious for her, but she could have just had some dimension to the character. Very, the way she spoke is very one note, always angry, always bitter and angry. Just, it just, it was annoying. But, and some of the characters were a little weird and, but I didn't mind it that. It wasn't that bad. If it was a standalone story that was a fantasy story, I'd say it's decent. I get, there was a, they tried to pepper it with a little bit of, you know, Easter eggs and, oh, this is how this was formed and this is what happened here and that's why that's like that. They tried to do that and I appreciate that. It's just that they weren't very good at it. They didn't do it very accurately compared to what people were expecting. And now all those people are trashed and they're gone and they're going to do a hard reboot from what I understand and try it again next time. But they lost a lot of money on that one. I, I don't know how that works exactly because either you pay for Prime or you don't pay for Prime. So I don't know how it loses money. I don't understand. You're not buying the individual episode. You're you're paying for Prime and you're getting to watch the Prime TV. So how do they say that it lost money? I don't know how that works. That's that's above my pay grade, well past where I know anything about. So I'm going to leave that to the experts. But like I said, I don't think it was the worst thing in the world. If it was a standalone story, it would probably be a little bit better to the palate. But because we know what it was and what it was supposed to be, people got a little pissy about it and they decided that it was not up to par. But that's just some people's opinion. That's just how it is. You cannot please everybody 
but in this case you can almost please no one so I understand and lately that is not unique just to this show there's a lot of things that people are complaining about a lot of different shows lately saying that things have just changed too much they want to go back to kind of the way some stuff was and whatever and and then if you say you don't like something even if it's for a legit reason you know you get called a troll for not liking it or they say you're just jumping on a bandwagon or you, even though you can genuinely just not like something there's nothing wrong with that you can say i just didn't like this episode or i didn't like this movie or i didn't like this show it's just not my style of thing but now because so many people complain if you do say that then you get looked at just like those other people who maybe complained and then they I don't, for no reason i don't know what whatever happens happens it's a weird world we live in now things are crazy here's what i say if you don't like something just just that's fine there's nothing wrong with not liking something there's also nothing wrong with liking something that everybody else doesn't like there's nothing wrong with that as a matter of fact that's how it used to be. I don't understand why society has gone the way of everybody has to say the same thing because it used to be, you know, people took pride in doing the opposite of what everyone else in society wanted to do or said was saying. And they were like, oh, just because you're saying that, I'm going to say this. And that was a weird time, too. I'm not saying that was a better time. That was still a weird time. It was... Everybody just says, oh, if they, if everybody does like it, then I'm going to say I don't, even if I normally would. And just, that was a weird time too. But now, sometimes they're saying that they don't like something just to fit in with everybody else who doesn't like something and not the other way around. It's just, things have reversed a little bit. It's just a weird thing. And people are weird. That's why. Because people are weird. They, they just, they get this weird idea in their head. And they got to stick to that thing for a while. And then they realize how dumb they are. And they stop doing that thing. They stop understanding, oh, okay, I get it now. I was just being dumb. I shouldn't have said that. I should have just said I liked it if I liked it. Or I didn't like it if I didn't like it. And everything would have been fine. You didn't have to, you know, condemn people for whether they liked or didn't like a show. Like a TV show or something. It's so weird. And coming up from what I understand on Netflix is that 90s show I saw the preview of that and it's still it's still the mother and father from that 70s show but now it's going to be all about the 90s I guess it's their grandkids or whatever and it should be a little interesting I don't know if it's going to be it might be trash just like everything else but it or it could be really funny that 70s show was a hysterical show at least the beginning of it was. I didn't see all the way through the whole thing. But I saw it when it was on TV. So now and it wasn't on in the seventies. Don't don't I don't want to hear any of that. It wasn't but it was in the two thousands that it was on. So it was just a funny show and it was a little hysterical. And Red was my favorite character because he's just so he I think there's that type of person in every generation. There is that character who is just a grumpy, nothing can please them kind of person. They're like that in every generation, which is probably why it fits to do it again in the 90s show is because you can do that anywhere. You can do that today. Even there's those people, nothing pleases them. They're cranky all the time. They're and their life has beaten them down and they're not happy and they want to let everyone know it. And that's and it, but it's funny when he does it for some reason he's like I don't know, it's supposed to be a good show. Let's see if you watch it. Let me know what you think when it comes out. It's coming out like sometime the beginning of January, but it's it looks like a funny show. All right, so looking at this now, um, the, there's that, you know, the most interesting thing I think to me was the part around that eye, that purpley part that I put all the extra detail in i think that was one of the most interesting things to me and the red purpley thing in the very front that thing was very interesting to me but just because of the different textures and things that i laid throughout them and different details that i put in them they became my favorite parts of the whole piece but let me know what you think if you thought this was terrible or whatever until the end or you just thought it was terrible even after the end it doesn't matter it's it's just art you, you don't come here for the art you come here for the conversation so that's just what this is about anyway 
So thumbs up the video if your art looks like trash and has a large ugly phase until you put in some more work and some more detail and then it all comes together. Or if you're one of those people who never makes it past the ugly phase, you just throw out everything right away because you can't get past the ugliness of everything. That's just sometimes how it is. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.